Hi, I'm Andrew Perry. I'm here with Anya Sepivi. Uh, she's the owner of the Winthrop uh, Gallery in San Pedro. Um, Anya, so I understand that you have, in addition to all these uh, different uh, unique things that you have here, there's one particular thing that has brought a force in with it. <laughs> Absolutely. So it's um. It's this picture here with this little boy. This is Lamb of God. It's surprisingly heavy, but I'll take it off the wall for you to see when you turn it around. It's interestingly got this star pattern drilled into the back, and it's got these areas on it. I don't know if you can see where it seems like a slot that would kind of move. Um, and the story behind it is that there was like an antique you want to call it a store but it was more just like a, a home that had another home behind it and they were attached in the back like you could walk out of the side of the house and into the other and it was basically like a, a you know little antique place and we had walked in in 2019 gotten a couple of things. I was, I saw this when I walked into one of the rooms and I was really drawn to it in a very morbid way and caught myself kind of staring at it, but it was really expensive. And so I thought there's no way I'm gonna buy it and try to resell it and make a little bit, you know, bringing it into the store. And plus it kind of creeped me out a little, to be honest with you. And then, um, you know, about a year later, we get this email that that same place is going out of business. Everything must go. Like, they're closing the doors forever. Um, I make my offer. I bring it into the store. And immediately, it got really weird in here. And um, the, the immediate thing that you could really feel was this oppressed feeling. It felt really uncomfortable. And you can feel that our store has a really good vibe in it. Um, but it felt really oppressive and uh, just thick. And, uh, and so I thought that's interesting, but we had a couple of things at that time that, you know, felt maybe could it be this, could it be that. Um, and then things started happening in the shop where, for example, our camera that records that's over there now was up there where those two little spots are. And my fiance was out of town and it just started it, at three in the morning. I woke up the next morning to look at a notification on my phone that at three in the morning it had turned on. Yeah. In, in the store and so I opened the notification and I watched the video and it's recording absolutely there's nothing happening in here and then the camera just falls the thing just fell and so I thought that's really uncomfortable and at this time my fiance is like you're down there's no you know there's no ghost in our store just stop it and then shortly thereafter our door dinger which comes off there's a motion sensor that goes off every time someone walks in the door I started noticing that it would go off here and there um, when the blinds are closed. So when there's like no shadows, no light coming through, no nothing. And so it'd start going off throughout the day and I'd, you know, I'd come into the doorway and I'd just feel really kind of freaked out. And, and uh, Dave, one day he's home, he's not on a photo shoot and he's home one day and it's a day that we're closed and all the blinds are drawn and it will not stop. Like the door dinger is just like non-stop going off. And now he can't even, I'm getting chills right now just yeah. talking about it. Um, he can't deny it. He's getting freaked out. We have a tap that's here and she's used to when people come in the door, she just kind of doesn't do anything like cats do. But she started to crane her neck in a weird way and her eyes would get really big and she would go hide. Really? Yeah, and so I had to sage in here quite a few times. I think it was over a three, like serious saging, everything on lockdown. Let's really get white candles and do the whole witchy thing that I don't know anything else to do. And then you felt almost an immediate shift go back. Yeah. And I noticed at that time that, you know, I think, you know, it all had to do with this little boy. And, and um, when we got him, somebody had mentioned that his ashes are in here. And that's what these, these areas are for. I haven't opened it up. I won't open it to confirm it. Yeah. Um, so but if you feel the weight, but if you feel the weight of it, you know, it's kind of an abnormal, it's, it's quite heavy. So I don't know. Um, but that's what I was told. Um, but well, I do know that there's a strong, and I can't find out who he is. Yeah, I'll ask you, uh, 
So this boy is yeah. basically a mystery. It, he is. I, so I looked up, I thought it would be easier if I look up like the birthday and death day historically, who died, who was born and died on that exact same day. I mean, you would think that that's limited, but what I was, what I found was that I need to at least know like country, state, like it boils down to real specifics that I have no way of telling. The only thing I can see in this picture is that he's sitting on someone's lap, um, you know, who has a beard. But I don't even know if this is from from the U.S. It could be from the U.S. It could be, be in the U.K. Or, it could yeah. be from Ireland. It could be from anywhere. Yeah. And so, you know, I I've really kind of you know bucked up against a wall trying to figure that out. I have posted it. Um, and kind of like an oddities platform to see if some people would know how to research it more and I haven't gotten any feedback since so Yeah, and the the dates are October 7 1881 to July 4th 1885. He's yeah. only four years old. Yeah cool. Well, um, thank you very much on you. Absolutely. And um, Stay curious. Yeah, that's perfect <laughs> Stay curious